Yes. Thank you for coming. I can't believe it's Bear Week and I have a bear book. And forever I wanted to have a bear book. I wrote a lot of them, I sent them out, and I didn't get any of them published until this one. This is my bear book. I did it, and this is perfect. I mean, Bear Week. So this is called The Bear Must Go On. Does anybody know the phrase, the show must go on? Has anybody heard that? The show must go on. So what that's about is that when you have a show, like a performance or even a game, if something goes horribly wrong and the set falls down and the star actress falls ill, you know what? You still, the show has to go on because the audience comes. So even if I was feeling sick today or something, well, no, I probably wouldn't have happened because I was feeling sick, but the show has to go on. And so this is about a bear kind of finding his way of being brave. So has anybody here ever played in a sports game, or been in a recital, or ballet, or an instrument, and felt a little nervous? Anybody? No? A little bit, okay, cool. Because I'm gonna let you guys know, you're the first group that I've read this story to, and so how do you think I'm feeling right now? I'm super nervous. In fact, I wrote everything down just in case. Um, it's really normal to feel nervous. And you might feel sort of excited, right? But then still sometimes you want to go backstage or wait or watch from the sidelines or anything like that. Um, and sometimes it's because you're worried you're going to make a mistake. But that's the whole thing with theater and music and games and sports is that sometimes you make a mistake and it's okay because you're a team and it's a group and it all ends up okay because you have friends and that's what's really cool. So that's really what it, this is about. And I'm gonna read it, so this is our plan. I'm gonna read the book and talk about it just a little bit more. And then you guys can ask some questions about writing books or about fairs or about theater because I used to do Theater. My daughter does theater, and we'll just see how it goes. Does it sound like a good plan? Yeah. You cool? Yeah. All right. So this is the bear must go on, and I'm going to switch to a different file. Now, again, I haven't ever read this to a group this size. I've read it to a couple kids. So this is, if I make mistakes, is it going to be okay? Yeah. Will the show go on? Yeah. Or should I run out of the door screaming? No. Okay. Cool. All right. So this is actually, if you see this, this is what they call a pace down. And I, this is, even though I like the book and I like the characters, I really like hats. And so this is actually my favorite part of the whole thing. I love that there are a bunch of hats. And you may also know me from, I don't know if you guys know this book. This is my first book. You do? Oh, no, he said. I'm much too shy. 
just thinking about being on stage made me very nervous. But he hummed a little melody and felt like himself again. Can you guys all hum a little? Like a little? Right, so maybe that calmed him down. Does he look calm? No. no. Everyone was shouting over each other. I need a hat. That's very important. Write that down, sir. I also need a hat, a tall hat. Write that down, sir. Squirrel. Don't forget little hats for the birds, said other squirrel. Hats without hats with straps. Without straps, their hats will fall off, and the show will be ruined. Bear gladly wrote it all down. He whistled a cheerful little tune, happy to remain hatless backstage. Can you guys do a little whistle? Whistle and talk like We also need tickets, said Rabbit. Shiny tickets. Very shiny, said Squirrel. Bright shiny in big letters, Bear, said other Squirrel. No one will come if the tickets are dull. Everything will be ruined. Bear surely didn't want anything ruined. He wanted everyone to come to the show, especially since he wouldn't be in it. So he wrote it down in big letters. As he did, he sang a sweet song which made him smile. Can you sing a quick sweet song? Quick. <laughs> Write that down. The curtain should be green. Right, said Squirrel. We need a sparkly curtain, said other Squirrel. With sequins sewn on tightly, even one loose sequin will ruin the whole show. So here's poor Bear. He's got curtain tickets, very important. Bear wrote, and he crooned the same little song. He was fine with any <coughs> curtain as long as he be behind it. Thankfully, everyone agreed. No, that should be sir. Sir. <laughs> Walnuts, pistachios, almonds, pecans, hazelnuts, coconuts. Bear wrote down a list of nuts. He's getting a very crowded number. Together, the friends planned every detail. The programs needed fancy writing. The set would be painted in bright colors. A drum, a bell, and a flute were absolutely necessary. And 17 rows of nine chairs each they figured would be enough. Bear wrote it all down. Poor bear. So there they are working to the bear, the little birds. The friends worked late into the night. The sequins were sewn, the invitations sent, and the hats, they were feathered. Bear shined tickets and sang aloud in the light of the moon. La, la, la. Do I try? Oh, you're so good! Everyone in the forest came, even the moles who didn't get up much. Bear's heart thumped as he drew the curtains open. There was a great hush as the audience waited. Rabbit looked at Squirrel. Squirrel looked at other Squirrel. Other Squirrel shrugged. It was silent but for the chorus of crickets. <clears throat> Close the curtain! Is it just me? Or did we forget something, said Rabbit? Something important, said Squirrel. Did we salt the nuts, said other Squirrel? <laughs> Check my notes, said Bear. Oh no, oh no, oh no, we forgot to write a show, said Bear. What do we do, said Rabbit? We're running out of time, said Squirrel. Other Squirrel was too worried to say a word. But Bear had an idea. While we were working, I wrote a song. You can all go up there and sing my song. But we can't read your writing, said Rabbit. And we don't know the tune, said Squirrel. You need to sing your song, said Other Squirrel. I can't, he said. You can't, they said. Bear looked at his friends. He could see how much they were counting on. The curtain opened, and Bear walked into the spotlight. His heart pounded. 
He thought about running away, but he didn't. He cleared his throat <coughs> and let his big bear voice ring out across the forest. It was beautiful. In the end, the show wasn't ruined. A song was written, a bear found his voice, and four friends brought the house down. Do you know that expression to bring the house down? It means they did a great job. Sure, a handful of sequins came undone. Some ferrets arrived late, those guys again. One bird's hat fell off, and Bear forgot to give you the words. But it turned out those things didn't matter at all. Bravo, can we give a bravo? I have permission. That is her in the middle. 